Okay, what I got here is the Alps Outdoor Redwood minus 25 degree flannel sleeping bag. I got two of them. Now, the thing about sleeping bags is you have to understand, when they say minus 25, I'm going to tell you right now, it won't do it. I haven't found a sleeping bag in my life that actually goes by those specifications. You have to actually think. Everybody's different. Some people sleep hot, some people sleep cold. So that's just giving you an average. So basically, this sleeping bag is supposed to work really good in cold weather. If you want to get down to the exact of a sleeping bag, take away 20. And then you're probably getting close, is what you're doing with a sleeping bag. These are 100% cotton. They are oversized. They're rectangle bags. They have a cotton canvas on the outside. And they are two-layer construction. Now, it says it eliminates cold spots, but I'm going to take a look at how they're made, and we're going to see if that's true. Um, what are they? 38 inches by 80 inches long, 38 inches wide. They weigh 13 pounds. So you're not going to use this for backpacking. I mean, this is for the people in the tent. This is for you in your vehicle. This is, if you're driving in, you're not putting this on your back unless this is all you're carrying. Um, the fill weight, it weighs 8 pounds. Zipper size is number 10. So there's 8 pounds of filling basically to keep you warm. So let's uh, open one of these up and let's have a look at it. And you can see it comes in a very large box. So we'll open this up and uh, I'll have a closer look at it. You got some pretty pictures on the front. If that means anything to you. It doesn't to me. What I care about is how it feels against my skin and uh, how warm that's actually going to be. Now, anybody, I don't care who you are, you should have a sleeping bag in your vehicle at all times. That's if you're smart. We've had a pretty warm winter this year. And, uh, well, I like the way they package that. That's pretty big, huh? Now, with it being a pretty warm, a pretty warm winter, I remember a couple of years ago, people were stuck on a state highway. Your car's not going to run forever. You know, you could take something like this, throw it in your trunk and leave it there and forget about it. It looks like it's got ties that go around it to keep it somewhat compressed. So, let's, um, let's have a look at that. It does got a good feel on the outside, even though it's uh, it's canvas. Under penalty of law, this tag shall not be removed except by the consumer. What do we got here? Consists of resonating polyester fiber batting, 100%. Made for an active lifestyle. Made in China. Um, outerwear material, 100% cotton. Um, Liner material, 100% cotton. Finish size, 38 inches by 80 inches. Net weight, 8 pounds. Yeah, it kind of feels like 8 pounds. So as you'll see here on the outside, we've got some amazing straps holding all this together. You see that? So we'll pop that off. Looks like some red string there. Okay. Okay, so let's unroll this. And I want the um, I want the other side. That is one big sleeping bag. So as you can see, with me sitting in front of it, I mean that's pretty wide. You know, I weigh about 230. I'm about I don't know, 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, I think I'm 5'9". I'm getting older, so I might be shrinking. But, um, you know, if you're like a 300-pound guy, I think you're going to fit in this pretty good. Really good, actually. So, let's have a look at this. Now, on this side here, 
we've got this Velcro tab, and that's really well made. I mean, that's really thick material there. And then I've got the zipper. That's um, it's a heavy-duty zipper. It really is heavy-duty, but it's plastic. It's not metal. I can't, I can't see you really doing anything to that, to be quite honest with you. That's the inside. And that feels really good. It really does. I mean, that has a really nice feeling to it. So, up at the top, we've got a drawstring here. So you can pull that tighter up around your head if you wanted to. I don't think I'd be using that personally. It's got quite a bit of insulation there, it really does. I mean, it's, pretty, it, it, it's actually pretty thick. But I really don't see this doing minus 25. So one thing I wanted to compare, like they say it prevents um, cold spots on you. And in order to prevent cold spots, if you know if you can see this, where you've got the stitching here, okay? You see where it pleats there, the stitching? Well, they should counter it inside the sleeping bag. So it shouldn't be in the same place. And sadly, it's, um, it's in the same place. So would you get cold spots with this? You might get, a, you might get some. I mean, because they've got this stitching in the exact same place on the inside. Now, had they countered it and had the stitching just a little bit below, you wouldn't have got that. Now, other than that, I mean, that's a, that's a pretty big sleeping bag. And this particular sleeping bag, okay, it allows you to connect two together. That's why I bought two. And there's no such thing as left or right with this sleeping bag. A lot of sleeping bags you'll see on, on uh, Amazon, they have it where they'll say left side, right side. And normally, if you're right-handed, you'll go left. If you're left-handed, you'll go right. But, and a lot of them are sewn on the bottom. So, you can't take them apart and use them like a bedspread, basically. Now, you can double them up, but you've got to have a left and a right. Where this particular sleeping bag, it does undo all the way down like a bedspread. Okay, so I have unzipped it all the way around. It does open up like a big king-size blanket. I mean, it's huge. I mean, I don't even have enough room here. And the stitching, stitching's really good. I mean, I'm not seeing any extra stitching hanging out. I'm not seeing, you know, any knotting. This is looking really good. I'm really glad I bought these. Now, like I said, you're not going to go backpacking with these with these bags. But if you're looking for, and I would say it's pretty in, inexpensive for the, the rating and what, what this does. I mean, when you start getting bags that go below zero, you're, you know, you're talking five, six, seven hundred dollars. You can get into a lot of money. But for something you're only going to use once in a while, I mean... Throwing this in the back of your car, I mean, I think it was like 100 bucks, 110 bucks for this one. And uh, I live in the south. I'm in Tennessee. Now, a minus 25 degree bag, and like I said, take 20 off, would not normally be too hot here in Tennessee. But with this particular bag being it opens all the way up, I mean, I can throw it on me like a blanket. And if I was in a vehicle, oh, you could cover two people with this easy if you opened it up. Because one thing to realize about sleeping bags is whatever you're sleeping on, okay, you have no heat there, wherever your weight is, because you crushed all the, um, all the insulation properties. The reason you stay warm is because you got air in between you and the outside. So your body heat, as it comes off your body, starts to heat that layer, and then that layer is actually keeping you warm. But in a bag like this, I mean, on a warm fall night, especially here in Tennessee, you'd be sweating like a dog. But being that you can open it, you can now adjust and let heat out, but have that comfort. But at the same time, you know, your car breaks down and you're stuck someplace along a highway or you've got little kids in the car. I mean, you, you could cover three, four kids with this quite easily. It would go right across the back seat. You don't want to mess around. And, you know, even people that drive brand new cars think, oh, I drive a brand new car. I'm good. I've seen brand new cars break down on my way to Nashville. I mean, I, I've literally seen all kinds of stuff like that. And I'm just like, 
I shake my head. You know, just some simple things to put in your vehicle, it just makes sense. And a sleeping bag this large, you know, because you'd only need one to cover all your kits is what you'd need. But um, this is amazing. And like I said, I bought two because I might want to zip them together and turn it into one big, you know, on top of uh, a queen-size mattress I blow up inside my tent. But this is really, really, really cool, really made well. It's soft. It feels good. Um, how do you clean it? When you get sleeping bags like this, most people will dry clean them. But if you go to the laundromat, they do have humongous washers, and you do need a humongous washer, and you need a humongous dryer. You can't do these at home. They're just too big. So, I mean, you could stick them in a bathtub. You could push up and down with your hands. You could then take them outside, hang them up, and then air dry them the old-fashioned way. You can do that, too. But you're not going to just toss them in your machine at home and wash it. It's too big. But personally, I would dry clean it if you can afford it. I got one piece of thread there that they didn't clean up. And, and I look for those little things, you know. I'm looking more so, more so on the seams to see if I've got any thread coming out is what I'm looking at. But I don't. I've looked this over pretty good. This is really well made. And it will definitely keep you warm. So this is the Alps. What is this called? This is the Alps Outdoor Redwood Minus 25 Degree Flannel Sleeping Bag. And like I said, you're not going to be backpacking with this. It's too heavy unless it's the only thing you carry. But for car camping, for tents, um, for putting in your vehicle in case you break down or in case you end up on a state highway where the roads are completely shut down because of ice and you're forced to stay in that vehicle, you can't leave your vehicle running forever. You're going to run out of gas. And the more you conserve your gasoline, the smarter you are. You won't be one of those fools. Now, if you had to leave your vehicle, okay, and you had to go, you know, walk toward a Lowe's or you see stores in the distance or whatever, because we did have people that here in Tennessee were stuck on the Nashville State Highway and they left their vehicles and made their ways to a Lowe's and a Walmart and the, the actual stores put them up for the night. Now, in that case, you got to leave your vehicle. I would take this with me. Like I said, what's it weigh? Like um, 13 pounds? I would roll this up, throw it over my shoulder. If you're just carrying this, you'll be fine. And make your way to the store, and then you'll have something to sleep on. But being in a vehicle without something to keep you warm, it's just stupid. Especially older people. They get colder a lot quicker. You should always have a sleeping bag in your vehicle at all times. And you're going to find just the peace of mind makes more sense. Anyhow, I'll have a link in the bottom. You guys can check it out. Uh, if you need to pick up a sleeping bag, they do make another one that's a minus 10. Like I said, take 20 degrees off. And you'll probably get close to what a sleeping bag really is. But I'll have a link to that one too if that makes, that makes more sense. But I looked for one that I could unzip all the way around. That was very important to me. There was another company called, it was Teton. They had them, and I almost bought from them. But their, their sleeping bag did not unzip all the way around. This one did. So that caught my attention. You know, I want to change this into a queen-size or king-size blanket and throw it on a blow-up. I'm good to go. Or I can zip it up and use it as a sleeping bag. So that was very important to me. But Alps Outdoors Redwood, it looks like they've done everything right. And uh, it doesn't look like you'll go wrong picking that up. And like you've seen from the two boxes in the video, I mean, they're quite large boxes when they come in. These are big sleeping bags. Links in the bottom, guys. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Oh, one more note. Does it go back together? Yes, it went back together really easy. It actually only took us I don't know, 20 seconds. It really wasn't hard. Three straps. What you do is you fold it in half. Roll it up from where you climb in the bag to the end of the bag. Roll it up that way. Then you pull your straps around and you put it together and that's what you come up with. But she is quite large, but she's rolled up as you can see sitting here beside me. Get yourself a sleeping bag. Links in the bottom. Catch you later.